Hello and welcome to this video on determining the term, the term belongs to a sequence. Now in the previous video we saw how we could use an nth term formula like this, like say 4n plus 3, how we could use that formula to work out a particular term in the sequence. So let's just say that we wanted the fifth term of a sequence with this particular nth term formula, then we just do, well if n is 5, then we do 4 times 5 plus 3 which is equal to 23. So the fifth term of this particular sequence would be 23. But sometimes we might want to do the opposite. We might want to say, is 23 in the sequence with nth term for n plus 3? Now we know the answer to this question is yes, but if we didn't know it was yes, how would we work this out? Well, to determine whether 23 is in this sequence, if it wasn't a sequence, there would be some n such that if we did four times that particular n and we added three, that gives us 23. And we found an example where that is true. So we're gonna say when we do four times the particular n we don't know and we add three, that gave us 23. Then we want to establish what n is. So what would we do? Well, we wanna get rid of that plus three. So we'd subtract three from both sides. And then we get, here we get 4n because the minus 3 has got rid of that plus 3. If we subtract 3 from this side of the equation, we get 20. And then we got 4 times n is 20. We want to get rid of that times by 4. So we divide both sides by 4. And we can see now that n is equal to 5. So that means that 23 is in this particular sequence and it's when n is 5, i.e. it's the fifth term of the sequence. And we already knew that from before, but we've got a way of doing it backwards now. If we knew what the term was, we could work out where it was in the sequence, what the value of n was. But what if we ask a similar question, is 25 in the sequence for n plus 3? Now what would happen? Well, if we did 4n plus 3, is equal to 25, so we're saying the nth term formula gave us 25 as our number in the sequence, then we subtract 3 from both sides, so that would give us 22, and then we divide both sides by 4, well to divide a number by 4 you can halve it and halve it again, so half of 22 is 11, half of 11 is 5.5. So that means that 25 would be the 5.5th term of the sequence. And obviously that's not allowed. We can only have like the fourth term, the fifth term. We can't have like a fractional position. We can't have the 5.5th term. That doesn't make sense. So therefore, we can establish that 25 is not in the sequence with this nth term formula. So let's just do a couple of examples of this and hopefully it should become clear if it's not already. So does 40 belong to the sequence with nth term 3n plus 1? So is 40 in 3n plus 1? Well, we do the usual thing. If it was in the sequence, we do 3n plus 1 to work out what the term was, and that gave us 40 as our term. So we subtract 1 from both sides to get 39, and then we divide both sides by 3 to get n is equal to 13. And because that's a whole number, it means it is 40 years in this, this sequence and it's the 13th term. So we could say, yes, it is the 13th term in the sequence. So let's just do a couple more questions. We've got, does 58 belong to the sequence with nth term 4n minus 3? So is 58 in 4n minus 3? So we do the usual thing, well we say the nth term of the sequence, 4n minus 3, gave us the term 58, is equal to 58. So we add 3 to both sides to get rid of that minus 3, so we add 3 to both sides. So we get 4n, the plus 3 gets rid of that minus 3, and we add 3 to this, and then we get 61. And then if we divide both sides by 4, then we get n is 15.25. Now we can see that's not a whole number. We can't have the 15.25 term of the sequence. And so we'd say that no, not in sequence. And if you needed to give a reason, you could just say that's not a whole number as 15.25 is not a whole number. Or you could say not an integer. That would be the proper way of saying it. So the answer is no, it's not in the sequence, because you can't have the 15.25 term. And then 
we've got this one, is 51 in the sequence n squared plus 2. So this, this technique doesn't just look, work for linear sequences where you have something n plus something, it also works for more complicated sequences like this, where we've got like an n squared term, for example. So we do the usual thing, we say that n squared plus 2 is equal to 51, we subtract 2 from both sides to get 49, and then to undo that squared, we do the opposite, which is to square root both sides. So we square root this, you just get n, we square root this. Now it could actually be 7 or minus 7, but you can't have a negative value then. You can't have a negative position in the sequence. It's only positive 7. And so yes, it is. It is in the sequence because 7 is the whole number. So yes, 51 is the seventh term. So the conclusion was yes. Now, just one final test your understanding question. So, I want you to establish if 78 is in the sequence 6n plus 3. You may want to pause the video at this point to have a go at that. Well, let's have a go. We do the usual thing. 6n plus 3 is equal to 78. Then we subtract 3 from both sides. So, 6n is equal to 75. And then we divide both sides by 6. So we do 75 divided by 6. Uh, if I simplify that fraction, I could divide top and bottom by 3. That's 25 over 2. And 25 over 2 is 12.5. Now, that's not a whole number, so we include no as 12.5 is not an integer. So the answer was no. 78 was not in this particular sequence.